Dzień dobry, cześć, hello. Today, guys, I'm going to be bringing you a part two to the seven things that shocked me when I was in Poland. So today, you know, I figured because my first video I made, the seven things that shocked me, is my most viewed video on this entire channel. So I figured you guys are interested in this and you would want to see another one. So without further ado, guys, let's just get started. All right, so the first one on my list is graveyards, and they are definitely different than in the US. So for example, in Poland, graveyards seem to be basically stuffed to the brim and multiple people can be buried in just one grave and so this was definitely shocking to me seeing a graveyard and then seeing no grass anywhere at all in sight but instead just seeing tons of graves stacked basically upon each other this was definitely shocking to me I'm not used to that because here in the States there is usually just one or two people buried in a single grave area you know like a couple or something like that or maybe a, a mother and like a, a child who died with the mother or something like that and then uh, usually there's there's like a spacing in between the graves but in Poland it seems like that's not really the case for most grave sites whereas in the US you can usually find lots of spacing in between graves and I guess there's really just a spacing issue or like a land issue because you know there's around 38 million to 40 million poles in Poland so I guess it gets really packed and people have to find a way to really just pack in the bodies in a sense as well so yeah this was something that was definitely shocking to me and something that I'm not really used to seeing in uh, the US for example. All right, so the second one kind of has to deal with driving and parking in streets and things like that. So the first one I wanted to talk about is whenever you're crossing the street in Poland and you're just walking across the street, you better make sure that it is a zebra crossing and that the light says green that you can walk across that street. In most cases, sometimes it's not and there's just a zebra crossing. But if you're not doing that, apparently you can get pretty big fines. So I don't know if I've shared this story before, but whenever I was in Warsaw with my girlfriend for the first time, we were holding hands and we were walking across the street and it was just like a random street with no zebra crossing or anything like that and I all of a sudden start walking and I'm like tugging her and she's like pulling back and she's like what are you doing and I was trying to cross the street and she was telling me that you can't do that instead we had to walk like 10 feet down the road to the zebra crossing and then just do it there and whenever I was asking why does she have to do this why do you have to walk to the zebra crossing she was basically saying that if you don't you get a strict fine and no one does it no one will cross the street and that's that's true I mean I've rarely seen people actually Actually even crossing the street and if you do it's like some big thing you know it's like wow someone's crossing the street you know it's kind of like that and this was really shocking to me I mean even in cities like New York or you know Washington DC Baltimore wherever you can just cross the street if there's no cars coming you can just cross the street and like you're you know just use your own judgment and it is a jaywalking violation in the US it is a, you would get a fine if someone actually cared but I've never once had anyone care or even heard of anyone getting a fine or anything like that as well so yeah before everyone in the comments says you know why would you do that it's just chaos in the streets and things like that well I hate to break it to you but everyone does that in New York City Baltimore every single East Coast city that I've been to everyone does it and no one cares so just be prepared for that and if you want to you can do that when you come over to the States you can just cross the street and like it's not gonna be a problem let me know what you guys think about that and how you feel I'm guessing most of you guys are gonna disagree with me and you're not gonna like it but it is what it is right all right so going along with this is parking on curbs I've never once seen a car park on curbs in the US at all and whenever I was in Poland I was so shocked I was like holy hell a car is driving onto a curb and you know most of these curbs aren't really too high they're like you know that high so a car can really easily get onto the curb and whenever I was in Poland we were in some cars that parked onto the curbs and you can just feel the whole car hit the curb pretty hard as it goes onto the curb and there's no way that is good for the shocks or the axle of the car over time I, I just can't see that you know, as a okay thing and going along with that I can't imagine the transmissions in Poland lasting that long either because whenever I was in the cities people were definitely slamming the pedals quite hard and I can't imagine the transmissions or the brakes even lasting that long either and maybe that's just a city thing as well because whenever I was in the mountains like in Zakopane people were driving you know calmly I guess you could say and they were very chill there and it was it was really refreshing actually because compared to driving in Warsaw where everyone is driving like mad you know it was kind of of really refreshing to be in the mountains where people are laid back in a sense and going along with that whenever you pull up to a red traffic light in Poland the light will go from red to yellow to then green which is something that doesn't happen in the US I, w I honestly wish it would because then you could at least prepare and put the car into gear if it's a manual 
and you know you could at least prepare to be driving and it would probably speed up the entire process as well of traffic and all of that whereas you know in the u.s that's not really a thing at all all right so the third one on this list is drinks that are not refrigerated so this may come to a shock to some americans especially from the south but you know polish people aren't really into drinking liquids with ice it seems like i don't know i there's something about ice that i really appreciate and i definitely like and I, it's just i'm used to it i'm american i'm just used to it and whenever you go to a restaurant in the u.s for example you know you have a cup and it's like you get more ice than actual liquid in the cup and you know I, i'm just okay with it over time and i know like some polish people don't like this because my girlfriend especially doesn't and instead she would rather just have a glass with cold liquid but I don't know so yeah it was just kind of a bit shocking to me that you know not all of the time people are drinking cold drinks or drinks with lots of ice in them and I, I know this is gonna sound weird to a lot of Polish people out there but and probably Europeans as well but it's just something that I'm used to being an American is having a drink with ice in it always and most refrigerators here will have a water option you know where you can basically just get water and some of those are you know already pre filtered like they have filters built into the refrigerator and then you can also get ice from there as well all right so the fourth one is the amount of churches and honestly I thought that where I live there's just tons of churches like there's like four or five churches in my area but no that's actually not the case and you can see some vlogs of areas that I've gone to in Poland and I'm like oh there's a church there's a church there's a church there's a church you know it's like every other street there's a new church and it's kind of crazy I mean churches are definitely a big thing in Poland and I'm curious as to what the revenue that churches make in in Poland are because I'm guessing that they're tax-free just like in the US and they are probably making tons of money but anyways I'm not going into that but more so that the amount of churches is something that definitely shocked me because you know I, I knew that Poland was religious and you know Catholic and all that but I didn't think that there was gonna be churches at nearly every single block you know down the street so yeah it's just something that definitely shocked me it was pretty interesting to see whenever I was there all right so the fifth one is the unpredictability of weather and because whenever I was in Poland for especially like in the summertime I just remember it being all of a sudden it's dry hot and then next thing you know raining and then next thing you know dry and hot like immediately after and then followed by raining again like these quick little bursts of like rain followed by Sun and it was just really shocking to me and I think this also varies a lot more in the fall in the springtime and yeah it was just definitely different than what I'm used to because you know for the most part in the US at least in the eastern inside of the US it is the same weather every single day so it's mostly hot and like partly cloudy and then it will just downpour towards the end of the day and there's like a huge thunderstorm and that's usually every single day and this was something that I was definitely not used to in Poland because I would go on to a weather app check the weather stations what they were predicting for the day and all of a sudden it would say it wasn't raining for the day for example and next thing you know I would be soaked by the time I got back to my girlfriend's house and yeah it was just something I wasn't used to in Poland was the unpredictability of weather going along with that was I remember one time we were about to go driving somewhere and on the car there was a film of like tan to gray dust you know I touched it with my finger and I'm like what is this it's not pollen because you know pollen is typically yellow or green you know around that color and basically my girlfriend told me it was sand and I was just thinking sand and I was you know thinking from Wendouf the desert in Poland but no it's actually Actually from the Sahara in Africa which is crazy to think of that sand from the Sahara will blow onto cars and things like that in Poland and in Europe that is definitely shocking to me because we don't have that issue in the States and even though we have sand deserts in the US we don't have this issue where the dust will just blow over to for example all the way over to the East Coast and I'm pretty sure that that has happened before but it is not a regular occurrence for example or happens every single year but it is something that was definitely shocking to hear is that sand from the Sahara will blow over all the way to Poland that is just crazy and I even looked this up and what I saw was that the sand from the Sahara will also blow over all the way across the Atlantic Ocean all the way to Brazil and go into the Amazon rainforest and somehow that benefits the rainforest in some way I don't know some animal science person probably knows but yeah it was just definitely weird and shocking to hear 
hear about this. All right, so the sixth one was drinking. And honestly, I thought most people in Poland drank and call me an ignorant American. Yes, I know. But you know, all we hear is these stereotypes about, for example, Slavic countries, you know, just drinking like vodka and things like that. You know, for example, like here in Russia, vodka drink you and you know, all of that stuff. So there's just all of this popularity that we think is in Slavic countries with like vodka and all of this. And while, you know, vodka and drinking is much more than in the US, for example, it definitely wasn't as much as what I thought it was in Poland. And going along with that, I thought that everyone would be drinking, you know, a beer or alcohol, you know, at the table whenever we're eating dinner. And that's not really the case at all. It's not really a normal occurrence. And, you know, for example, on Christmas, you know, normally you're drinking shots and things like that. And yes, you are drinking, but it wasn't as much as I thought it would be, especially for normal dinner occurrences and things like that. And comparing this to the US, I don't remember any of my family members ever drinking at the table, even on Christmas day. I mean, maybe some wine, but like that's even it. I don't know. Maybe it's just my family. They're not really drinkers, but yeah. So it was definitely a bit shocking to me, even seeing, you know, shots and stuff like that at the table. But yeah, for the most part, Poland is not really a drinking country that I thought it would be. All right. So the last one on this list is the kebab. And this was something that definitely shocked me whenever I was in Poland. So my girlfriend was talking and hyping up what's called the kebab. And she was, you know, explaining it to me. And she was just saying there was all of these kebab restaurants everywhere and that she wanted to take me to one and see what I thought of it. You know, because I really like Mediterranean food. I like, you know, just food from other cultures and things like that. And so whenever she was talking about it, all I could think of was a shish kebab. So a shish kebab or a kebab in the US is basically like chopped up meats, green peppers, onions, things like that, all on a stick with, you know, some seasoning. And then you just put it on the grill or in the oven and then it'll just cook. And then you can basically just eat the stuff right off of the stick. And that's all I was thinking of whenever my girlfriend was talking about the kebab. And basically whenever I got there, then I realized that it was not, it was was the sandwich so it was something that definitely shocked me as well as the popularity of it I mean you can find a kebab restaurant everywhere in Poland I mean you don't have to go far to find one Polish people really like kebabs which I'm guessing that type of food is Turkish I'm pretty sure and so yeah that's something that definitely shocked me was the popularity of kebabs in Poland and just kebabs in general so anyways guys that was seven more things that shocked me whenever I was in Poland so if you found any of these interesting or you want to let me know what shocked you when you were in Poland or in the US, let me know in the comment section down below and I would love to hear from you. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Dziękuję i do widzenia.